Hallelujah. Welcome to 2024. Uh, it is new for us, but not new for God. Because he finishes anything before he started. So all these years are already mapped out. They are all written in his book before the first day. We'll go straight on into God's word. Look. Let's go into God's word quickly. And it's very interesting. Luke chapter 2 verse 10. 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 In case you see anybody sleeping around you, if somebody's sleeping, please get a bottle of water and baptize the person nicely. And then call me. <laughs> it's called the season of refreshing. <laughs> If somebody sleeping, he needs a refreshing. Just pour a little water on the head and give me a call. <laughs> then the angel said to them, do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings or good news of great joy, which will be to all peoples. Tell the next person, it's good news of great joy to all who are interested Ask the next person, are you interested? Uh, if you are interested, this is the year that would roll out good news with great joy. The first arrival of the Messiah on earth was characterized by angelic visitations. An angel visits Zachariah, an angel visits Mary, and an angel visits shepherds on the fields. And the angels brought messages. And when you look at all the messages the angels brought to Mary, to Zachariah, and to the shepherds on the field, the import or content or substance of the message was good news of great joy for all peoples. So, a matter of fact, this good news of great joy dissipates fear. It kills fear. So, the angels are now, fear not. Why? Because good news and great joy is going to take residence in your lives. Good news and great joy is going to locate you. And because of this good news with great joy, fear will not have, will not have any room. Can you touch the next person and say, fear not? Don't panic. Don't be afraid. Good news with great joy is your portion. But it's interesting that the angels show up glory to God in the highest and goodwill towards men. And they have a message for the shepherds. The Bible says the shepherds were watching their flock by night. Night time is sleeping time. It's easy to sleep in the night. It's easy to have a cozy snore in the night. And you need to understand Solomon said, nothing is new under the sun. The first time he came, this good news of great joy was delivered to shepherds that were watching their flock at night. Times when they were supposed to sleep, they were awake watching the flock. And I believe that the second coming of Christ is also going to be characterized by the similar events that we saw. There will be a lot of angelic activity. And in case you don't know, Jesus is coming again. And he's coming sooner than what you think. He's coming soon. And before he comes again, there will be a lot of angelic activity. And you need to prepare. This is the year that we will experience a lot of angelic encounters. Angelic activity. First coming, the angels came gave the message, fear not, good news of great joy. Before he comes again the second time, it's also going to be good news of great joy and fear not. The reason is because the time the shepherds were on the fields was night season. It was night. The angels came at night. Shepherds watching their flock at night. And prophetically, it's night on this globe call the earth. It's night on the earth. Tell the next person it's an evening time. It's an evening era 
on planet earth. The night time is a time of darkness. And when you look critically on our planet now, it seems like darkness is winning. It seems like darkness is raining. It seems like darkness is having its free day. It seems like the powers of darkness are having a good day. But it's within the same era of darkness that the radiance of God's power is being released. And it's being released on the premise of good news with great joy. So whilst the world is getting darker and darker in the sense of the powers of darkness seems to be active. Yes. Why? Because the devil knows his time is very short. The devil knows he doesn't have enough time. So he's throwing every evil he can on humanity. I believe there are demons that have not functioned on earth before that the enemy is deploring, releasing on humanity. Every kind of filth is being thrown on humanity. Now, it's darkness. But the Bible says that gross darkness shall cover the earth. But before he came to verse 2 in Isaiah 61, let's go to Isaiah 61 and read that. Isaiah 60, 61 verse 1. No, let's go to Isaiah 60 rather. Let's read 60 verse 1 first. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Tell the next person, arise and shine. Tell the person, the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Okay, so God is giving us an instruction. We need to arise and shine, for the glory of God is risen upon us. It's an instruction to Israel. But look at the time this instruction comes. Look at verse 2. For behold, uh -huh. let's all read in concert, ready, go. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. So it's a dark season. It's a season. It's an evening season. It's a night season on earth. Darkness shall cover the earth. And deep, what? darkness the people but the lord will arise upon you tell the next person this is the game changer say the lord say the lord is the game changer look at somebody say darkness cannot overcome the radiance of god's light say it's the night season but you will arise you will shine for the glory of God is risen upon you. When you want to find out what is actually happening, always look to Israel. Darkness shall cover the earth. And deep darkness, the people. But, tell the next person, I love the but. Yeah, because that but negates everything above. How many of you have seen the bird bat? You know that bird, there's a bird called bat. How many of you have seen that? It's the only bird on earth that sleeps head down, upside down. So anytime you are talking and you introduce bat, you turn the whole thing what? Upside down. It's darkness and gross darkness, but there's a negation. He says, but for you, arise and shine, for your light has come. So when you see the darkness, it's the arrival of your light. So this year, there will be two locations that your life should be alert on. One location will be in Christ. Another location will be in the world. In the world system, there will be darkness, gross darkness upon many souls who have not encountered the love of Christ, who have not yet known Jesus. You know, the product of evil will arise. Fear, trepidation, panic, stress, 
discouragement, strife, all kinds of things. You hear this on radio, TV, and on the social sewage, which you call the social media. But the reality is that when you come across all these bad things, you need to know it's time for you to arise and shine, for your light has come. So the angels came the first time at night, but there were shepherds that were not sleeping at night. They were awake watching their flock. And we as God's people must be awake, being conscious of souls. Every soul belongs to the Lord. He created them. They need to reconnect with him. So we should not be sleeping during this dark time, singing the same song they are singing, feeling sad for ourselves, having a pity party. It's a night season, but we need to stay awake. Tell the nurses, wake up. wake up. No, give him a nice Holy Ghost slap. Say, wake up. Take your chance. You won't get this chance again. Say, wake up. It's time to wake up. And that's why we are having the 21-day prayer. It's a time to wake up. It's night, but we have to wake up. And as we are conscious of God's people, conscious of souls, conscious of reaching out to the souls, there will be angelic encounters. The heavens will open and messengers from the throne of God will begin to descend. At the first coming of Christ, the messengers appeared to Mary. A messenger from God appears to Mary, an angel from God. And Mary represents believers in Christ and ministries and ministers that are pregnant with visions and divine purposes that would change communities, countries, and continents. Mary there represents people who are in the body of Christ, who are pregnant. They've already taken conception. God has released visions and dreams and purposes in their lives that would transform communities, countries, and continents. Angels will begin to meet such individuals. Angels will begin to come from the throne of God and bring messages from the throne of God to such people. The second, uh, I think the first was Zachariah, but I've explained what the Mary in this contest of study represents. But Zachariah represents the priesthood. The Bible says we are the chosen generation. How many of you believe that? We are the royal priesthood. Amen? So this is the year for believers to expect that God will open up the heavens. And angels will begin to show up from the throne of God, ministering, bringing specified instructions from God. Amen? To such category of people, the priesthood, those who understand that you are not just born again uh, just to be against everything. I've realized there are some who are born again and there are some who are born against. Are you born against or again? Ask the next person, are you born again or born against? <laughs> so if you are really born again, you need to understand you are a chosen generation. You are not just a priest. You are a royal priesthood. So let the royalty hit your mind and heart. Amen? You are royal priesthood. And the angels appear to Zachariah, representing the priesthood. And then there's a third category of people that are shepherds watching their flocks at night. So there are believers in Christ who are so conscious. They are focused on souls and they are focused on getting people saved and helping them to grow in the body of Christ. They are believers that are winning the lost. They are passing on the good news of Christ to others. And after these people have received Christ, they are also sacrificing to make sure that these brothers and sisters grow in the faith. Shepherds watching their flocks at night. So you don't get somebody saved and abandon the person. That's not watching at night. It's a night season on the earth. We are supposed to win souls, but we are supposed to go further to help them grow. That is taking care of the flock. 
So for believers that are investing time, energy, effort in winning the lost and helping the saved to grow, there will be divine encounters. There will be angelic encounters. God will begin to send messengers from his throne to such people. But this season will be characterized by the same message the angels brought. Fear not. I bring you good news with great joy. Tell the next person, fear not. It's good news with great joy. Whilst the spirit of Christ is releasing good news with great joy to his people, that old snake will be busy staring up bad news with deep sorrows. So this is a year where we'll see a distinction between God's people and those who have turned their back on Christ. Because there will be a first group that is encountering good news with great joy. And there will be a second group that is, will be having bad news with deep word sorrows. So the choice is ours to make. We need the Holy Spirit to help us to choose good news with great joy, not bad news with deep sorrows. So within the year, there are all kinds of things you are going to hear. Bad news on ascendancy. Deep sorrows on ascendancy. As I sit, as I stand here with you, there are frantic efforts to activate another pandemic more lethal than covid so within the year, you hear that there is some outbreak somewhere and people are dying. There will be all kinds of news that is evil. The kind of news that zaps your strength, zaps your faith in God, makes you feel intimidated, makes you feel as if you are helpless. Bad news with deep sorrows. That will be the system of the world. The system that is under Satan's control. But for those that are in Christ, it will be good news with great joy. Amen? Good news with great joy. So we need to make a decision. Are we going to focus on the bad news with deep sorrows? Or we are going to focus on what? The good news with great joy. This is the choice we have to make daily throughout 2024. The bad news will scream for your attention. The bad news will look enticing for your attention. The bad news will begin to attract you. But if you focus on the bad news, it will drain you. And the reality is that you have deep sorrows. But if you hear, focus on the good news, it will secret great joy. And fear will have no place in your life. Because fear is a creative force. When you fear something, it's almost like creating it. Fear has a nature like faith. Faith is a creative force. When we have faith in Christ, it creates and generates all the properties that are in Christ and causes us to be victorious. But when we fear, it creates all the destructive tendencies. It awakens all the wrong things in us. And we miss the best that Christ has purchased for us on the cross of Calvary. John 16, 33. We would look at two systems that we need to choose from. John 16, 33. John 16, 33. Why is God telling us all these things? And he makes it clear. These things I've spoken to you that in me, everybody say in me, that's Jesus. Jesus says in me, you may have what? Peace. In the world, say in the world. So there are two locations, there are two specific locations we have to take notice of. In me and in the world. You you, you, you either operate from the location of in me, that is in Jesus, or in the world. 
In Christ, no fear, good news of great joy. In the world, you will have what? The definition of tribulation is trouble, 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 trouble. Everybody say that? Trouble, 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 trouble. How many of you have trouble here? Let me see your hand. Okay. Now some of you have so much trouble you can't even lift your hand. I get it. I get it. Yeah, trouble. So there's a system that generates trouble. There's a system that breeds trouble. There's a constancy of trouble. And that system is not in Christ. Because in Christ is peace. In Christ is what? Peace. Not trouble. So when you hear about the trouble, 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 is the system of darkness inviting you. If you want peace, is in Christ. You see, in the world you have trouble, tribulation, but be of good cheer. Another way of saying be joyful. I have overcome the world. So in Christ, there is overcoming properties. If you are in Christ, you overcome. If you are outside Christ, you will be overcome. The situation will overwhelm you. It will overcome you. But if you focus on Christ, you overcome. So in Christ, you will have peace. In the world, you will have, you'll be in pieces. Ask the next person, you want peace? Or you want to be in pieces? <laughs> so 2024, it's a daily choice. Today, do I want to have peace or be in pieces? If I want to be in pieces, I will focus on the bad news that would generate deep sorrows. If I want peace, I will focus on Christ because in him, I'm an overcomer. You will overcome. He has already overcome the world. So immediately you focus on him, that overcoming property is generated in you. That Christ ability flows in you. So, the choice in Christ or you want to be in crisis. Outside Christ is crisis. Tell the next person, outside Christ is crisis. Tell him you have a choice to focus on Christ or be in crisis. Uh -huh. If you focus on Christ, you conquer every challenge. Christ is an overcomer. He has overcome the world. Write this down. Christ conquers all challenges. Write it down. Christ conquers all challenges. So when you are in him, hooked up in him, connected to him, you will conquer every challenge. No matter what that snake throws at you, you will overcome. Christ conquers all challenges. He has overcome the world. So when you are in him and hooked up in him, you also overcome. As a matter of fact, the Bible says we are more than conquerors through him. We are more than conquerors through him. If you are a believer in Christ, you are more than a conqueror. Example is a boxer and his wife. The boxer goes into the ring. He trains for months. He goes into the ring and get all the punching and all the beatings, bleeding. Then he takes the title. He takes the money. Then he goes home and hands over the money to his wife. The wife didn't take any beating. So the boxer is the conqueror. The wife is more than a conqueror. So Jesus goes to Calvary and gets all the beatings. Whip the devil. The third day rose again. And where is he bringing all the benefits? To you. A believer in Christ. So he is the conqueror. And he says that you are more than a conqueror. 
So you want to be a conqueror or you want to be conquered. You choose. So Jesus has paid for all the debt we owe. He has served the sentence fully. He has accomplished all that the Father sent him to do. He has won total victory over Satan and all his agents. He rose again to pass it on to you. So for yours is to receive and be persuaded that you have it. Then you experience it. So you, in Christ, you are conqueror. Outside Christ, you are in crisis and you will be conquered. Ask the next person, Christ or crisis? Ask him, what do you want? Say, you want to be in peace or in pieces? You choose. Because the bad news is going to scream for you. Deep sorrows are going to rise on this earth. There is a conscious effort to touch one or two things in certain areas of the earth that will affect the economy of the world. As a matter of fact, they are eff- some people are effortly, I mean seriously working to make sure there is another big pandemic such that many people would come below the poverty, for poverty level because when that happens, people are more vulnerable to vices and ultimately Satan gets more people and take them to hell. But we are the church of the living God. We have advantage of the, over the enemy and we would win and win and win again. But we have a choice. Christ or crisis, peace or in pieces. You want to operate under the system of light or you want to swim in the sewage of darkness. Case study. Practically, let's see how this works out. Oh, I love this. Hallelujah. Are you there? Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14, verse 29 to 31. Matthew 14, 29 to 31. The disciples are in a boat with Jesus. How many of you believe that you are journeying with Christ? So they are on a journey on the sea of life. And life is like journeying on the sea. Uh, If you have been in a boat on a sea before, you realize it moves here and there. Uh, Things are not that stable. And that's the reality of life on earth. That's the reality. Today, everything looks good. Then the next day, some situation, it's up and down. But Jesus is in their boat. Tell somebody, Jesus is in my boat. Okay. So if you are journeying with Jesus, I guess everything should be smooth and nice. It doesn't always work like that. If you smell like Jesus, every junk in town will come after you. Is that okay? So there was a storm. And through the storm, the disciples saw something moving, coming closer, walking on water. And you know, the appetite for bad news (laughs) It's almost something that is ingrained in the fallen man. We love bad news. Right now, if somebody gets healed, and most people around would not even know, but let somebody take his clothes and go naked, uh, there is an appetite and a hunger for negative things, for wrong things. So Jesus is walking on water, getting close to the disciples. The first thing they thought about was, that's a ghost. It's bad news. The problem is going to get worse. It's bad news. And Peter looked carefully, hearing Jesus said, it's I. Fear not, it's I. So Jesus speaks and Peter says, it's Jesus. So he said, come. Peter tells Jesus, if it's you, 
then tell me to come. I better get out of this boat full of fearful guys walking on the water than to stick with these fearful guys and sink. It's better getting out, reaching out to Jesus than trying to convince a bunch of non-believing believers. And Jesus said, come. Peter made a request. It's troubled time. It's darkness, storm everywhere. And Peter makes a request. If it's you, tell me to come. It's a simple request. Full stop. The prayer meeting is over. And Jesus said, come. When it's boisterous, when there's problems and challenges and struggles and all of these things, is the time to pray. Is the time to talk to Jesus. Tell the next person, talk to Jesus. Some of you have spoken to everybody except Jesus. Everybody knows your, your problem except Jesus. Peter could have spoken to Thomas. His faith would have died completely. Because if you are in a storm, don't talk to Thomas. Talk to Jesus. <laughs> when you hear the negative news increasing on radio, social media, and all of that, it's time to shut off and talk to Jesus. That's why we are fasting. 21 days, we are talking to Jesus. This is the time to talk to Jesus. Amen. You don't go to the next neighbor and say, have you heard the news? Are you? Who are you? And the, and the neighbor will tell you, oh, you don't know even what I heard. What I heard is worse than what you heard. And there's always that ministration of negativity. We say, oh, have you seen there's a sickness that I've come? He said, yeah, my brother's sister's nephew got that same sickness. He's dead, you know. And your faith is gone. Tell the next person, talk to Jesus. When troubles rise. Yeah, when there's trouble, trouble, talk to Jesus. So Peter said, Jesus, if it's you, tell me to go. And Jesus didn't say, ah, you are already afraid. You don't have the faith. Let me check the condition of your faith. No. Jesus said, come. That's how generous Jesus is. He said, come. And that word come was enough. Peter just got out of the boat and started walking on water. One word, come. And Peter is walking. On water. The word come changed the condition of the sea to become solid ground. One word from the mouth of Jesus changed that situation. Come. One word and the circumstance has changed. Don't compare yourself with others. Is that okay? Don't compare yourself with others. You talk to Jesus and listen for his voice. You know, the import of what I got from what prophet was sharing is just listening to God and stepping out with what he has said. He stepped out with what God has said to him. And, and look at that beautiful star, you know, prayer center that is coming up. It's just a word God gave. He believed it. And that settles it. And it's rolling out. Come. Peter did not ask questions. Uh, uh, what does the come mean? How sure is this come? He just got up and started walking. And it was solid ground. Your Jesus can change your circumstance and condition. He can change the condition and he can change your circumstance with one word. So Peter is now walking on water. Peter came down out of the boat, he walked on water to go to Jesus. So his focus is Jesus. Tell the next person, focus on Jesus. Not junk. So you have to choose between Jesus and junk. Christ or crisis. Or peace. Or pieces. You have to choose. If you focus on Jesus, you escape the junk. If you focus on the junk, the junk will junk you. Are you here with me? Now, Peter is walking, and verse 30, something happens. He decides uh, there's something more real than this come I had. Verse 
Verse 30. But when he saw that the wind was what? Boisterous. He was what? And beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. He saw. His focus was Jesus. He shifted focus to the circumstance, to the situation, to the bad news. Please write this down. In 2024, I should remember this every day. In 2024, I should remember this every day. And then write, quote, what I focus on, what I focus on is what I feed on. What I focus on is what I feed on. And what I feed on fills my life and flows through my life. What I focus on feeds my life. What I focus on is what I feed on. And what I focus on and feed on fills my life and flows through my life. What I focus on fills my life. What I focus on is what I feed on. And what I feed on or focus on fills my life and flows through my life. What I focus on is what I feed on. And what I feed on fills my life. And what fills my life, what? Flows through my life. So let's do it again. Number one, what I focus on, I feed on. Is what I feed on. And what I feed on does what? Fills my life. And flows through my life. So at any given time, what your life is full of is coming from what you are feeding on. And what you are feeding on is what you are what? Focused on. So our focus will determine what flows in our lives, what flows through our lives. How many of you understand it's a simple logic? If you focus on something, you will feed on that thing. That thing will start seizing your energy, your time, and your thinking. And what you are feeding on is going to fill your life. Your life will be saturated, full of that thing. And what your life is full of will result in the things that flows through your life. The things that you encounter, experience constantly. Peter's focus was Jesus. And as long as he was focusing on Jesus, what is he feeding on? Christ. And what is he full of? Christ and faith. And because of that, he's able to experience a miracle. He's able to experience something that most normal human beings have never experienced before. Are you here with me? It created a distinction in his life. He was able to walk on water. No human being had done that. Why? Because of what he was filled with. Why? What he's fed on and what he's focusing on. So if you focus on that thing, it is going to feed you. And if it feeds you, you'll be full of it. And when you are full of it, it will determine what you're experiencing. But when he shifted his focus from Jesus to the bad news, which is the storm, what happened? He's now feeding on fear. So what filled his heart? Fear. He was afraid. And what did he experience? A sinking experience. He started sinking. So we will sink in this year 
mentally, emotionally, spiritually, financially, relationally, we will sink if we feed on the junk. But if we feed on Jesus, he feeds us, he fills us with his power, with his strength, with his wisdom. And guess what? What flows out of us is miracles, supernatural outcomes, things that are beyond the natural. How many of you understand this? He started sinking because he shifted his focus. If the focus is shifted, you start feeding on something else. And what is feeding you is what is feeling your life. And what your life is full of will determine the experiences. What is flowing in your life, what you are encountering. So you always think of this way through the year. Is it Christ or crisis? Is my focus Christ or the crisis? Am I focusing on Jesus or the junk? Is it peace or pieces? Am I focusing on light or darkness? Because as long as the focus is on Christ, the conquering grace of God settles on you. And regardless of the challenge, you will overcome. Amen? Amen? You will overcome. What I focus on is what I feed on. What I feed on fills my life and flows through my life. So if the focus shifts, what flows out of us is not good. Are you here? Thank you, Jesus. We'll read our last scripture. I want to ask this question before we read our last scripture. How many of you understand what I'm, I'm sharing? And I'll slow down to make sure you grasp this because this is not, it's, it's not emotionality. Emotionalism is something you shout and hang around. But the reality is that you need to get the substance. Are you here with me? God has given us the power to make choices. And through salvation, God has energized that ability to make choices. Such that we can choose to reject that which is junk. And receive that which is of Jesus. We can choose to focus on Christ and say goodbye to the crisis. We have that ability. Amen? We have that ability. Tell the next person, you have to choose life. Amen. Tell him again, choose life. Amen. We have to do that. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. Deuteronomy 30, 3, 0, verse 19. Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you. That I have set before you life and what? Death. Blessing and what? Cursing. Therefore, 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 that both you and your descendants may what? Both you and your descendants may. Both you and your descendants may. So if you want you and your descendants to live, you have to choose what? Life. Did Jesus say, I'm the way, the truth, and the life? Yeah. So who is life? Jesus. That's Christ Jesus. So each day, if you choose Christ and focus on him, You feed on him. He fills you. And then he flows through you. Amen. Tell the next person you have the power to choose. Choose Christ. Not crisis. Choose peace. Not pieces. Tell him choose Jesus. Not the junk. Amen. We have to make that decision. If you go back to the Garden of Eden, it's the same. 
the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and what? Evil. And God said, don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good. And it's not the tree of evil. It's the tree of knowledge of what? Good and what? Evil. This is the curiosity that kills the cat. It's a knowledge. This thing is about knowledge, information. Let me watch out what's happening on social media. Let me go and check what's happening on radio. It's, a, it's curiosity, the longing for knowledge. But this kind of knowledge will help you hear the good things that is happening and the bad things that are happening. Just that is the tree that leads to death. Because immediately you expose yourself to find out that information, the evil information will permeate your heart. Are you here with me? So when they took the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it led to death. Focus on the tree of life, who is Jesus. Feed on that tree and there will be no room for the curiosity to find out, hey, hey, what's happening? What are they saying? What are they thinking? Because anytime you do that, the Satan said, that's a nice piece of fruit and there are worms inside. You eat the fruit, the worms get into you. Because the craving for that information is going to open you up for the negative thing, the toxic thing to enter your heart. And you lose focus of Christ. Are you here with me? It's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Not evil. The tree of knowledge is the desire for information. 